Hey there, this is Petra from Petra Fisher Movement. I am here to talk about how you can improve your balance and stability. Balance and stability are so important for our bodies, especially as we get older. So fall risk is a real problem as we get older. Once you fall, you tend to not live a lot longer, so it's a big problem. And it also sucks because who wants to break a hip, right? Stability means your ability to not wobble as you encounter the ground. That's one of the things it means. Stability is important because if you're stable, you're probably not going to fall. It's part of balance. Uh, it also tends to decrease your risk of chronic injuries. So if you're always wobbling as you encounter the ground, you get a lot of weird forces going through your body and that can definitely contribute to things like knee problems or hip problems or whatever. So we're going to work on both today. The keys for working on balance are making sure you've got great feet, making sure you've got great hips, and then putting it all together by actually practicing balance. I have a lot of foot tips in my Free Your Feet program. There's a link uh, in the, the notes for this video, so pick that up for sure. But we are gonna do a quick rollout today. I've got a yoga tune-up ball. Any ball will do. When you're rolling your feet, it's not a balance exercise, so go ahead and hold on to a wall or a chair. And we're just gonna do a few swipes back and forth across our foot just to wake things up. Balance is partly about your brain being able to feel the ground underneath you. So increasing blood flow, increasing sensitivity, increasing awareness of our feet is a great first step. Plus we overall want strong feet with wide toes because that gives us a better base of support for our balance overall. Why don't you put your heel on the ground, your ball goes underneath the forefoot now and you're just gonna swipe back and forth a few times. This is one of my favorite ways to roll. It feels really good and it helps spread out the front of the foot. So just a couple minutes there. You don't need to do too much rolling. Other side, rolling back and forth, thinking about kind of finding all the parts of your foot. So roll the outside edge, the middle, the inside edge. This is something that you can and probably should do every day. And I've got more specific instructions in my Free Your Feet program. So definitely a good thing to pick up if you're serious about long-term health. Now we're gonna pause and we're gonna windshield wiper. So ball underneath the forefoot and you're literally just kind of rotating over it, getting a great stretch through those constricted metatarsal heads. It's definitely a tight area for most of our bodies. Okay, so now that we're a little warmed up, let's move on to something that looks a bit more like balance. I like standing on a yoga block for this. It's kind of irrelevant, but it helps a lot of people um, get into their hips more. So again, have something to balance on if you would like a chair, a counter, a wall. You're gonna stand on your block. And <laughs> that's all you're gonna do really. But here's a few tips for how to stand on your block. So number one is don't slop into your standing hip. This is a big, problem that most of us have when we balance is that we're not good at using our balancing muscles. So you want to think about that standing hip pulling inwards to your midline. You can even kind of take your finger and push your hip in. And as you push your hip in, think about pressing down through the heel of your standing leg. And you might notice you get taller. And if you do, that's perfect. So you're going from this side of hip sachet out to standing hip. This is something I teach as an exercise. I call it the pelvic list. There's a video linked to in the bottom uh, notes here. So we'll go over it more clearly. But just as you're standing, that's something to think about. And you should feel work in your hip when you're doing it right. If you're just doing this, less likely to feel work in your hip. Okay? The other thing to think about when you're just practicing balancing is where's your weight? So it's super common as we do this to kind of lean forward. And this is the same thing as leaning sideways. You're basically just putting the weight of your body into your connective tissue. So your connective tissue probably doesn't love that a whole ton. And it's not giving you the benefits you want in terms of improving your muscular balance capacity. So hip comes back. It should be hips over heels. I have lots of hips over heels videos on my YouTube channel, on my website, in my, in my courses. If this is really hard for you, just do a mini hip hinge so you can feel your weight in your heel. And that reminds me also, I've got short feet, so I can kind of stand anywhere on my yoga block. If you have longer feet, yes, let your toes hang off because your weight should be on your heel anyway. So you can practice weight in your heel, hip pulled in, 
this alone, if you do this regularly, is going to be a fantastic balance exercise for you. Okay? So try to apply that in all of your standing balance work. Let's do a little bit more here. So I'm going to go back down to the ground just to demonstrate. I'm going to pick up my right foot. You do not, you should not need to, to bend your right knee in order to pick up your right foot. You should be able to get it all from your hip. And if you can't, go ahead and bend your knee for today's purposes, but learn how to pelvic lift because you'll be way better off if you do. All the same things apply when you're standing on one foot on the ground. So no hip out to the side, no pelvis forward. So you can do this all in a little tiny forward bend. And your first job is, can you just stay balanced like this for 30 seconds, maybe a minute? Those are good goals. You can practice your balance while you brush your teeth. You can practice your balance while you wait for the kettle to boil. Find little times in your day when you can practice. Let's switch sides. So make sure you do both feet. One foot is almost always better at this than the other. Let me just point something out. If you're flipping side to side on your foot, that's a sign of poor stability. So you're really hoping to build the ability to stay fairly still and stable in that foot uh, and watch for that. So if you're still flipping side to side, you probably don't want to add a ton of these add-ons I'm about to share with you. The next add-on, once you get some stability, some sense of stability, and again, you can definitely hold on to something when you're first starting. So even a finger on a wall will really help you build strength and stability and capability here. Next step, turn your head side to side. Because in real life, you need to be able to balance no matter where you're looking. Your head can turn side to side or your nose can stay forward and your eyes can turn side to side. Uh, that's definitely throwing me off a little bit here. So I need to practice this too. It's a good idea to practice balance for about 10 minutes a day. Okay, back to the other side because I'm getting tired. Next step, close your eyes. This is much harder than it sounds like it should be. You should be able to balance eyes closed for 10 to 30 seconds, same thing. Like this is your body now telling your brain where you are in space and not your eyes. And that's why it's harder because most of us are a little disconnected from our body. So another tool that can help you here is controlled articular rotations, the CARS that I teach in my Joints for Life program, because those help you connect your brain to your joints, which helps that proprioception, that sense of where your body is in space without your eyes open, okay? So single-legged balance, beautiful. Let's talk about more dynamic balance options. I've got my TFC Soulmate. This is great balance beam option for travelers especially. Um, James from TFC gave me mine uh, and I love it. I admit it's awesome. But if you're at home and you want an option for balancing, a two by four is a great first step. And I think the TFC sells beautiful beams as well. I've never tried one, but I will when I live in a single place again. So you can see the first thing I'm doing is I'm just getting up here, one foot in front of the other, seeing what that feels like. You can do that single legged standing that we did earlier. And of course, you can do that head turn, eyes turn, you're not gonna see that, maybe closing your eyes. You can also practice balancing on your forefeet. This for me is a very difficult move. This is not a skill my feet love. So that means that's a great skill for me to work on. Of course, if you have a longer beam, you can spend some time walking back and forth on your beam, which I recommend practicing as well. And that works great on a two by four. And you can walk forward and backwards and as well as shuffling sideways like so. Whoops, I'm gonna fall over. Okay, so beam, awesome. Now let's do a couple of floor techniques that are really great for that dynamic balance again. So this one you can moderate out. So even if you're not super balanced yet, you can make this small and work on it. They're called foot clocks. You're gonna stand on one leg and you're gonna bend your standing knee and you're gonna reach your front foot in front of you and you're gonna just touch your toe down and you're gonna come back to the middle. Then you're gonna bend your knee and you're gonna reach your other foot out to the side, call it three o'clock. You're gonna come up. And then you're gonna take your foot back, lean forward and tap. It's like you're squishing a ladybug is what David Gray calls it. And then you're gonna cross your foot behind you and then come up. Let me show you from the front. 
I'm gonna switch sides as well. So front foot reaches forward, toe touch down. Reaches sideways, toe touch down. Reaches backwards, toe touch down. Reaches behind you, whoop, toe touch down. A few things to think about. Number one, I'm gonna show you from this side again. Um, you should actually reach as far as you can as long as you can stay in control and it doesn't hurt. If this is hurting your knee, don't go as far. This is great exercise for building your knee health and stability, but find the place you can work from. And go slow and stay in control and about four clocks on either leg is a really good amount to work for. So do think about getting more range of motion as you practice, but don't rush it. Don't hurt yourself to get that range of motion. The control is the most important part. The building up capacity is also part of that control. And then sideways, like so. So those are awesome. I'm gonna do one more. This is really uh, great if you have to do a lot of hiking, if you get to do a lot of hiking. Um, you can change the side of your, the size of your step, and I recommend doing that. But it's a controlled step down. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend your standing knee, you're gonna reach forward, and then maybe you're just gonna step back up. So you can see how this is actually quite similar to those clocks. So you could certainly do this as a clock as well. But you might wanna do this specifically because it's a weight transfer. You could even step off it. And you can make it bigger. So you can use a larger and larger step as you go. I'm gonna go sideways to you, like so. So this is really your downhill walking. Downhill is when people fall. So getting really good at the control here is gonna be so good for you. My left knee isn't as good as my right knee, so I tend to practice on my left knee. Go slowly, stay in control. Kind of a theme here. Just one more thing I'm gonna show you. Your knee can kind of go in over your big toe, but if it's really wobbling in, try to make it track over your big toe, your second toe. And if that's hard for you, again, make it smaller, watch the tracking, keep the stability. There's lots of ways to work on that. It's a rotational control issue in your leg, um, <laughs> uh, but just watch for it, try to maintain that um, kind of knee over second toe for this purpose. And if you're struggling with that, definitely shoot me an email and we can talk about what you can do. Okay, so I hope that gave you lots of ideas to improve your balance. These are all great exercises and you really will benefit from about 10 minutes a day of balance work if having great balance and stability are your goals. Okay, check me out at www.petrafishermovement.com.